Hello and welcome to Skin Biology with Dr. Hefsi Tago. I'm here every Thursday bringing you fresh insights into your amazing world of skin. In this episode, we are going skin deep to understand why you may be suffering from oily skin and some simple remedies you can apply to help manage the condition. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Did you know that skin makes its own natural oils? Yeah, and it's all thanks to this gland, your sebaceous gland. The main job of the sebaceous gland is to secrete sebum, which is basically skin's natural oils. However, unlike your skin cells that have the ability to replenish themselves throughout your life, every individual is born with a fixed number of sebaceous glands. These then continue to grow and increase in size with you as you continue to grow. So usually from when a child is born from zero to about one week, you have an influx in the secretion of sebum. And then the levels tailor off till you hit the age of about nine years old and the levels start to see a sharp increase again. Now this would continue to rise until about 17. This partly explains some of the hormonal changes that come along with puberty, adolescence, teenage years. Of course, as with everything else, like the fingers not being equal, the amount of sebum that each individual is going to produce at each stage will vary from person to person. But generally, the larger your sebaceous glands get, the more sebum they tend to produce. But why is it that you only tend to experience the effects of the oily skin around your face? Well, that's simply because your face, um, the back of your ears and the upper trunk of the body generally tend to have a lot more sebaceous glands than the rest of your body. So what can you do about your oily skin? Stay tuned. So what can you do about your oily skin? In severe conditions, you can have a prescription of retinoids to shrink the size of the sebaceous gland. The smaller the glands, the less sebum they would produce. In extreme conditions, you can have some of these sebaceous glands removed from the more concentrated areas. On a day-to-day -day basis, here are three other things that you can do. Firstly, wash your face regularly throughout the day. Secondly, use oil-free skincare products. And lastly, particularly during humid and dry seasons, you just have to keep dabbing your face regularly throughout the day. It is important though to minimize contact with your face, particularly during high secretion periods, because microbes transferring from your hands to your face are going to cause breeding grounds, which would then develop an acne, makes it more severe, and we don't want that. Having oily skin does come with some benefits, such as maintaining skin barrier function and also having a healthier immune system. So, what determines whether I'm going to have oily skin or not? Studies have it that men generally tend to have larger sebaceous glands than women, and so they will tend to produce more sebum. Women tend to produce more sebum during ovulation, Thirdly, studies have also shown that usually during spring and mostly summer times, your sebaceous glands tend to produce more sebum, which makes sense because the warmer it gets, the more water you lose from your skin. If you missed episode one on dry skin conditions, now is a good time to catch up. So naturally, when it's warmer, you're going to lose more water, which means your skin is going to produce more oils to help maintain that barrier function. Same thing with humid climates you tend to produce a lot more sebum when it's humid as well. Interestingly, research has also shown that people of African descent 
tend to have larger sebaceous glands and therefore produce more sebum. And lastly, having underlying conditions, usually linked to hormonal changes, will also impact on the levels of sebum that you produce. So there you have it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Or if you do want to keep it private, then send me a direct message across any of my social media handles, which are in the footnotes below. See you next week for another episode of Skin Biology with Dr. Hefty Tago.